Greetings. It's your boy, David. Uh, I'm going to make a, as you see the title of the video today, I, I'm going to make a little bit of a controversial subject video uh, today, and I hope that people will listen to the entire video so they understand what I'm, the point I'm trying to get to. Um, a lot of people are uh, evolved enough mentally to get to this point uh, at the title of the video, and then they don't click and they don't watch it. But it's kind of interesting if you'll listen to people. Uh, the problem I find as a psychotherapist is that uh, people don't listen. Uh, they act like they're listening to you when you're speaking, but sometimes they, their mind will not listen to your actual words. And that's part of the problem with psychotherapy is that when we're trying to give advice or we're trying to engage in a conversation with most people outside of uh, clinical, when we're not in clinic with them, um, like friendly conversations, they don't listen to us the way that they're, our patients do. Okay, So this morning, I have a uh, acquaintance, which is not really an acquaintance because I've never uh, had any social engagement with the person other than seeing this person walk in a park that I walk in. So anyway, long story short, I am, uh, by birth, I am a Messianic Jew, uh, and my father was half Messianic Jew, a uh, Warsaw Polish uh, heritage, and then my mother uh, was from Ossetia, Russia. Uh, so we are, uh, through and through, I am a 75% um, Jewish blood person. So I am a messianic Jew, though, so I'm a Christ worshiper, and that kind of helps me, Christians, understand that, you know, the, the first apostles were Jews as well, and so they became messianic Jew, Jews, and from messianic Judea spring Christianity. So we, we acknowledge both the Holy Bible King James Version, and we acknowledge um, the Torah. So we acknowledge both books, and we adhere to both of their uh, teachings. Uh, the problem with it is that you have to be real careful in society what you share with people. So when I first met this person, I shared with him when he stopped me. We, we crossed each other's path probably six, seven months ago in, in the spring, I think, or in the summer, I don't remember. But anyway, uh, and I said hello to him. He says hello to me. We spark and all of a sudden, we sparked, it sparked up a conversation. Um, I find him interesting. He, he, he was interesting. But the problem is, is that he is so... Um, He's, a, he's so hateful uh, and hate-filled towards the Jewish people uh, that every conversation I have had with him has been as anti-Semitic and as hateful towards Jewish people as anyone can imagine. And so it's, I have tolerated it for about eight months, and I've had about four conversations with this guy. Uh, so he just sits and talks and talks and talks, but all of his conversation is trying to accuse Jews of being the root of all evil, uh, the start of everything that's bad, the reason that all religions are, uh, he goes, quote, unquote, mystery religions. Okay, my thing is, is that I've tolerated it, and then today I didn't. Today I finally had enough, you know. So, of course, we, you know, very cordially he stops, and I offered him a good morning, as I always do. And this morning, for the first time, I recommended a singer to him off of YouTube which is Sarah Lieberman. Sarah Lieberman is probably my one of my favorite, as far as religious singers goes. Uh, she is my favorite singer on the planet. She sings uh, Messianic Jewish uh, music, and she sings it in Hebrew, so I can understand exactly what she's uh, meaning, and she translates it in English, and that's the English version in the next verse. And I think that's very important uh, for people that are singing in Hebrew, uh, if they want, and their audience may be, uh, you know, English speaking, which since English is the international language, I mean, you know, it is the global, accepted global language that we're going to speak and have been speaking. We can't really change that at this point. Um, so long story short, so the first thing out of his mouth is an anti Semitic remark. You don't have to speak Hebrew in order to understand uh, God. So I said, yeah, of course not, because the Christ spirit or the spirit of God has been on the earth from the beginning. He didn't hear me say that, right? He did not listen to my response. So he kept going on about, you know, how I said, well, I'm not saying that. I'm just giving you a recommendation of a video. Listen to a really beautiful woman sing beautiful music. So I don't know how he, so he took it as though I was 
he says to me, he says, I said, you, you just offended me. And he said, how? I said, well, Hebrew is the first language that I heard as a, as a child. And that was the first language that I learned to speak. And so if that's my first language, obviously things like religion and spirituality, that's going to be the language that I, uh, my go-to language when I'm trying to understand something of that nature, right? And so he couldn't, he didn't let me get to that point in the conversation. Uh, he was like, well, how, how have I offended you? Blah, 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 blah. And he just started going on. He said, you're trying to say I'm an anti-Semitic. I said, whoa. So I started there and said, I never use those words. I said, because I wouldn't accuse him of that, even though that's what he is. I mean, if someone tells you, if you meet someone in person in a public setting, and they tell you that they are by birth a Jew, and you, every conversation that you approach and try to preach to that person is an anti-Jewish, anti-Judea conversation and preaching. Are you an anti-Semitite? It's an obvious answer. Okay? So, but I, I didn't want to accuse him, and I didn't. I said, that's your mind thinking that. Because that's true. I mean, he, I, those words didn't come out of my mouth. There's no way he... But it, so in his opinion, any person that is of Jewish lineage says to him that you have offended me in your conversation. He thinks that we're accusing him of being uh, a Jew hater. Okay, well, so be it. And I told him that. I said, if you think... If so let me get this straight. If any person that is a Jewish birth says to you that, they, that you've offended them in their conversation or by any of your actions, you think that they're accusing you of being a Jew hater? That doesn't make sense. It sounds like you have something going on up here. And uh, so anyhow, I, that's how I told him. I said, you know what? Let's do it like this. I misspoke. You didn't offend me. I misspoke. That was my misconception. So that way I ended the, you know, I diffused the situation in a very friendly way. Uh, and so, of course, he walked away. Because uh, for me, I think it's it's just he, he's been looking for some kind of um, every conversation being uh, as anti-Semitic as it has been to a Jewish person of Jewish birth and, and background. I think it's obvious that he's a Jew hater and he was trying to get into a uh, fight, you know, a verbal altercation with me in front of people. But he didn't get what he wanted, so whatever. So like my family has recommended, because I always go to my elders for things like this, and they've recommended that if he ever starts to speak to me again, to just walk away from me. Um, and so I listen to that. You know, that's that's who I go to is my role model in life. Uh, and I recommend any person in my situation, if you have someone that uh, is mistreating you or uh, making you feel uncomfortable in any way in conversation or with their body language or anything, go to your uh, role model, your parent, your guardian, go to whoever it is that helps you in life. If you're an adult and you have uh, someone older or someone more educated and experienced in your life that can help you like i'm so blessed to have someone in my life like that and um so that's who i go to to get uh my advice from and it has never steered me wrong um some things you you know like uh, i was telling my um one of my relatives the other day i said you know education trumps wisdom and the reason that education trumps wisdom is because education is a culmination of our world's wisdom compiled in a palatable way in a book to read and try to understand all of the wisdom of the past. That's all education is in every subject, science or arts. It is merely us studying the past to understand what we should do for the future. So we are literally chock full of people's wisdom. So when you have someone that has, you know, 10, 12 years of education, probably even if you're older than them, you might want to listen to them because they probably have a little bit more information than you do. Um, and some people can understand that, and sometimes it in intimidates others. Uh, so be careful with that. Job, it's saying peace out. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.